how does collagen work and what do we have to do to increase collagen in our skin, bones and joints? Watch until the end to get a detailed 5-step plan. And what's most splendid is that you'll get your collagen without any supplements at all. Also, we will discuss what's wrong with marine collagen and which amino acid is the most criminal in the world. Collagen is a huge protein. It gives strength and elasticity to the skin, joints, bones, mucous membranes, blood vessels, nails and hair. It serves as a basis, a support for such tissues, allowing them to maintain their shape and withstand loads, like the cord inside a car tire or the rock warp. Without it, strength, elasticity, shape, youth and beauty are lost. That's why it has become a superstar among dietary supplements. Also, there is another reason too. It is incredibly cheap. I'm Dr. Lana, I'm physiologist and neurobiologist, and here I teach you physiology and medicine that you can use in your daily life to be healthier and happier. The things that contain collagen in nature, you cannot sell to anyone. These are skin, scales, hooves, cartilage, ears, horns, bones, and other rather tough and dense animal tissues that people refuse to eat of their own free will. But they are rich in collagen, which can be extracted. And if you package it nicely and write that it not just collagen, but some special collagen, you can inflate the price of the product obtained from the waste and make an incredible profit, turning trash into cash. You'll say, well, it's not the same thing. Okay, not many people are going to eat cartilage or pig skin, but then there is an option with a nice scientific title, collagen hydrolysate, which is collagen that is easier to digest and it's cheap too. And we usually call it gelatin. And we've been using it for centuries to know yourself and your body. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Here I teach you physiology that you can apply in your life right now to get better health and not to waste money for scum health products that you don't need. Gelatin is almost pure collagen. If you look at the composition of this product, you'll find that 90% of it consists of protein and it's Collagen. It has the same set of amino acids as collagen and contains collagen peptides, which are easier to digest because they are much smaller than collagen. Food gelatin is included in so many products and is time tested, but you don't need it too if you suddenly decided to increase the elasticity of tissues and start collagen production in your own body. Part of the research say that collagen hydrolysate helps reduce joint pain. But some studies show that there is no link between collagen supplementation or gelatin consumption and joint health. And that actually makes a hell of a lot of sense, even though it seems like it should be the other way around. Watch to the end and you'll see what I mean. Whatever protein you want in your body, that's what you should eat, or not. They say eat liver for your liver health and cartilage for your joints. This idea is very ancient. Some tribes of cannibals used to act on the same principle, like eat the brain of the enemy to become as smart as him, eat the heart to become as brave as him. So eat collagen to increase your own collagen. But that hardly works just like eating hearts and brains. By the way, why hasn't this idea been spread further and no one eats hair and nails to grow their own? Just imagine, you bought a magnificent manor built of bricks, an architectural masterpiece with turrets, bay windows and balconies. You decided to move it to your place. You take it apart to the bricks and bring the bricks to your place. But your workers don't know that those bricks were a manor house before. They don't know that you want them to build a manor house again. You have no way to talk to them and somehow convince them of that. 
They are, hmm, okay, bricks. Let's build a pixie. It's winter soon. The pigs will freeze. We need a pixie. So they build it. And finally, they will build a fence because there's some funny people hanging around. So they did. Same bricks, different buildings. Our cells use the amino acids we give them to build what they need at the moment, not what we want them to build. If you eat a protein in the form of collagen, digestion will break this collagen into amino acids and the cell will not even know that it was collagen before. Furthermore, marine collagen. Maybe they will build their own collagen from these amino acids if they really need it. Or maybe they need an enzyme or a channel or a sensor of a hormone or some other more vital protein for this moment. On the other hand, if they really need to build a collagen, they will build it from milk protein or chicken meat protein. Why not? The set of bricks is the same. And to be honest, collagen is not the best source of these bricks because it's more difficult to digest than other proteins, let's say from the meat, milk or pulses. There are also some stories about collagen peptides that they are smaller and it's the best choice to replenish your collagen. Peptides are amino acid sequences with a length of 3 to 4 amino acids and they really can pass through the intestinal wall, but inside the intestinal cell they will be dismantled into pieces. So anyway, only the separate amino acids will go into the blood. You can have any other complete protein, any other source of amino acids. What is collagen exactly made of and where do you get it? Amino acids, criminals and what's wrong with the marine collagen, we'll discuss right now. Now let's figure out what our collagen is made of and where to get it from. There are only three types of amino acids in collagen. Proline is part of all proteins in all living organisms. Even if a fly accidentally flies into your mouth and, or you chew on a blade of a grass, it's already a source of proline. The second amino acid is lysine and it is found in eggs, meat, beans and peas, seeds and nuts, cheese and some types of fatty fish. In general, our normal diet is usually full of lysine. Both animals and humans cannot produce lysine in our own bodies and we have to get it from food. But this amino acid is essential for the body growth. That's why it is often added to livestock and poultry feed, as well as to infant formulas, to be honest, so that everyone grows faster and better. Lysine is probably the most criminal amino acid in the world. In the 90s, five of the world's largest companies producing lysine for livestock organized a cartel. They formed a plot and raised the price of this supplement by 70%. There is a movie inspired by this case with Matt Damon. Shortly, the devious plan was uncovered, the leaders were arrested and jailed, with some help of Matt Damon's character. And the price finally was reduced. The total fine for such a criminal conspiracy was one of the highest in the history of anti monopoly cases. $105 million. Such a small amino acid, but what a lot of drama. Well, it turns out that there are not only drug cartels, but also amino acid cartels. That's insane. And the last amino acid is glycine. You know it, because this amino acid is sold as a supplement for better brain activity. But it makes absolutely no sense for the brain to take glycine. Yes, it is needed in the brain and it is actively used there. But the brain makes its own glycine. And there are no ways to transport this amino acid from the blood to the brain. Glycine in a pill or as a part of food protein cannot physically get into the brain. There is a barrier. But to go to the synthesis of collagen, elastin or keratin, it can. In general, you will not become calmer with a glycine pill under your tongue, but perhaps your skin will be thicker, literally. 
but you should take it a lot. Better and cheaper to just eat some chicken. Glycine is high in foods and it can be found in meat, fish, eggs, in seeds and nuts and beans, in shellfish, in cheese and in gelatinous desserts. Now we know from what you can assemble as Lego your own collagen and from where to get these necessary amino acids. To sum up, almost any protein will be suitable. But in addition to amino acids intake, you need to follow a few more rules. Watch till the end. I can't help but say something about marine collagen in this video. I'm sure you will ask anyway in the comments. One of the first producers of marine collagen, this man here, he is from Iceland and apparently a very smart businessman, I think. He was wondering how to make better use of the code and sardines that are processed in the fish factories of his home country. And he figured out how to turn the trash into cash. The skin and scales of fish which used to be thrown away or to make a rather cheap fertilizer, his company began to process into marine collagen. To produce such collagen is much cheaper than even gelatin. And thanks to an active promotion, it can be sold for many times more expensive. Genius scheme, of course. But it's unlikely that you would willingly eat fish skin and scales for such a high price in powder. Honestly, I found only 19 studies on marine collagen. Most of them studied marine collagen cream. Some of them studied supplements, most of them recorded uh, changes visually by comparing before and after photos, not very reliable again. And of course, no one compared the group that took marine collagen with the group that took just regular animal protein with a more or less complete set of amino acids. Perhaps the whole theoretical effect of collagen supplementation is simply the effect of increasing protein in the diet, but it's more expensive than ordinary protein, like whey protein, and hard to digest. Chicken is still better. Or soy protein, if you are vegetarian. So, what should you do to increase the amount of your own collagen in your tendons, joints, bones and skin? It is necessary to create the most suitable conditions for its formation. And if you know this condition, you can achieve it. And the first thing is oxygen. Collagen depends on oxygen. It is oxygen that allowed animals to make collagen and with it to grow large bodies with large skeletons. Without it, there would be no collagen and there would be no large organisms on Earth at all. Bacteria have no collagen and you see how small they are. You don't see? No. Because they are really small. The fact is that collagen has oxidized forms of amino acids, hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine. It is a sort of modification of the usual amino acids. To get them, you need oxygen. And we have oxygen in our blood. The more active the blood flow in the area where you need collagen, the better the formation of this protein. The easiest way to improve blood flow is massage or aerobic exercises, running, jumping, swimming or brisk walking. The second requirement is vitamin C. The enzyme that helps in building collagen doesn't work without vitamin C. No vitamin C, no collagen. It is impaired collagen synthesis in scurvy causes teeth to fall out. Gums without collagen become loose and cannot hold the teeth in place. For skin, uh, you can use creams with vitamin C and for tendons, bones and joints, you can consume more food rich in vitamin C. Fruits, berries, greens and herbs. Vitamin C deficiency is rare nowadays, even in northern regions, but it's better to make sure that you eat enough fruits and vegetables. The third condition is heat. Collagen is a long, long fiber. It looks like a three-stranded rope. To make it to twist, to assemble it into the final functional collagen, you need heat. The molecules start to twist at a temperature of about 36 degrees Celsius. 
you'll say, well, good news, the body temperature is 36 and 6, but it's not quite true. 36 and 6 we have in our armpits, but legs, knees and feet are often colder and can be as cold as 28 and even 24 degrees Celsius. So for collagen synthesis, it's important to warm up the body, especially the right areas where you need collagen. You can massage your knees or skin, take a hot shower, sauna, or make a warm compress. The fourth condition that we already discussed, it's enough amino acids in your food to build your collagen. Make sure you are eating enough uh, complete protein per day, one gram per one kilo of your weight daily. And finally, the last, possibly not so critical, elements needed for collagen synthesis. And this is B vitamins, especially B6 and B13, and copper. Copper deficiency is very rare, so it's unlikely that anyone has a problem with the copper. But anyway, what the sequence of actions for optimal collagen synthesis might look like? Well, you eat a protein with vitamin C, for example, high-protein yogurt with berries or a protein gelatin dessert with fruit. It will take about one and a half an hour to digest it. After that, you exercise. Better run, brisk walk, ride a bike or swim to get a good run of oxygen-rich blood to all the areas of the body. Joints and tendons are not very well supplied with the blood at rest. They need movement. If the training is unavailable, you can have a massage or at least a light warm-up. But the training is better because it includes the hard work too in this process. Then after the exercises, you can additionally warm up the areas where you want to grow collagen, like hot shower or sauna or local heating. For example, you can make a warm compress or use a warming ointment. Ointments for joints with collagen are totally pointless. Such a giant colossus as collagen cannot get through the skin. It's simply impossible. The effectiveness of this ointment is the same as if you spread jelly on your knee and wait for it to be absorbed. Nonsense. As you can see, to form collagen, it's not enough to just take collagen powder or pills it needs many conditions to be formed, but you can achieve it. A set of actions can multiply the probability of collagen formation in your body and make you healthier and stronger. Know yourself better. Grow your own brand new collagen and shine with your superpower joints and perfectly elastic blood vessels. Until the next videos. Bye.